Right, welcome back. Um, let's start with governmentality. Uh, I call this lecture Governmentality and Disability Studies a Special Connection. Uh, the, uh, for further analysis and understanding, I strongly recommend Shelley Tremaine's book, Fu Foucault and the Government of Disability. Okay? Uh, it, it sort of uh, gives you great uh, samples uh, of analysis uh, that one can use uh, in the in the twenty first century to you know uh, how Foucault's understanding of power and governmentality uh, you know is applicable across disability studies thinking using. Shelley Tremaine's editor, uh, edited book as a launch pad, let me share some of my thoughts uh, that have been brewing in my head recently about how one can, um, you know, think about um, uh, disability studies uh, uh, with a view of governmentality in mind. Okay, to begin that, uh, let, 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 let me talk about, uh, uh, let me take a framework such as social model of disability. Right, uh, what does social model of disability uh, in my previous course? Uh, you might um, come across this idea. Um, uh, for those who are not familiar, I would strongly recommend, um, um, you know, uh, listening to those lectures. But broadly, social model of thinking is based on the view that, um, you know, it is the ill-organized social arrangement that makes people, um, you know, uh, that causes disability. For example, if this braille, um, if the if my system my le learning environment did not facilitate for me to have a braille notes in front of me, then I will be, you know, put to uh, great difficulties to make my lectures sound coherent, right? So, uh, it, uh, an ill-organized social system uh, on account of discrimination, uh, marginalization and even discrimination, uh, uh, societies can disable, impair people. Uh, uh, blindness can be a medical category, but it can be, uh, it can become, uh, you know, a heavy weight on me uh, by way of disability if, you know, inclusion dynamics does not come into picture. Right, so that's the social model. It uh, broadly goes with the Marxist, uh, by Marxist perspective on, you know, uh, infrastructure developments and when economic, cultural, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, building blocks are in place, then it might lead to emancipation. Uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with social model. But think about the Foucault's governmentality, say disciplinary power uh, in, in view here. See, in Foucault's thought, disciplinary power works in different ways. One is, uh, it's a kind of a cellular force, I mean cells individualization. I'm, a, I'm an individual, you're an individual, and they are individuals. Uh, suppose we have that perspective in mind, and, in, uh, and my individuality is determined by productivity. Social model, uh, which is very popular in Britain, um, is based on the idea that if disabled people are given 
are enabled to be productive, productive they will be as good as others. So they can be given gadgets uh, and gizmos. Uh, maybe they can be given paid assistance. Um, uh, in Britain, uh, uh, they give disability living allowance and uh, authority to pay to uh, carers uh, who are paid assistants uh, and uh, the agency is given to the disabled person and so on. Okay? Uh, so, uh, in a sense, social model is driven, driven by the idea of productive individual. An individual is a fuller person if that person uh, uh, especially disabled person can be fully integrated via the notion of productivity. Uh, a teacher, if she can be function as a teacher fully, a doctor, if he could uh, uh, perform fully as a doctor, then the, then the uh, social model mission is said to be complete. But uh, real life, real productivity uh, circumstances work differently. They are not isolated individuals all the time. They are not cellular. You see, for example, uh, there is lots of power dynamics uh, 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 between this uh, uh, a particular disabled person benefiting from a social model. Uh, he, his, uh, for example, a person like me who is a teacher, my productivity is influenced by the kind of technology that I use. My, my, my self-esteem is uh, driven uh, by how I relate to caregiver if I am in, uh, in a, you know, uh, in a productivity situation. Maybe there is plenty of uh, competing notions, uh, you know, contradictory uh, uh, views about care and productivity going on between me and my caregiver. It is entirely possible. Second, uh, in a productivity uh, driven regime, uh, inclusion need not always happen because I have a gizmo that will enable me to write research papers properly. Maybe my colleagues still are given to the idea, uh, okay, this guy, fine, is very good, but let's not include him uh, for dinner. Uh, 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 dinner, cultural extravaganza, uh, you know, partying and friendship uh, and even, uh, you know, going to a cinema and anything is based on uh, friendships and uh, he's boring type to include because I have to hold him in by hand and take him and so on. So if, if that were the perspective, then I'll be left alone, uh, not included. Think about another scenario. Maybe they're including me, but not fully. Oh yeah, let us, ha let us have on, uh, in a conference table, uh, uh, when somebody want to s look inclusive, they might uh, include uh, a person from uh, perceived uh, low caste, um, uh, 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 a black, a disabled, uh, you know, uh, uh, a transgender person, and a white, and so on. The thing is, is it true inclusion? No, inclusion here is based on appearance not true inclusion. 
So likewise, because uh, productivity, uh, inclusion based on productivity is complete, uh, because perceived differences don't look persistent, uh, do, not, uh, do not emerge, it does not mean there is lot of power going on. And even among disabled people, they are not a monolithic entity. There is this gender dynamic uh, uh, disabled men by way of uh, their, uh, the functioning of patriarchy in differing ways. They have some privileges which disabled women don't really enjoy. And there, there are some uh, hierarchies uh, by way of power dynamics among disabled people themselves. All these things go under the carpet when social model is not seen with a critical lens in favor of power and governmentality. You see, that is where Foucauldian thinking comes really, really handy for an emancipatory disability studies project. Well, it is one thing to do disability studies just for its knowledge sake, just to sound different and just to, you know, uh, uh, say take something novel, but it's entirely different to do it with ethics and ethical commitment for inclusion. Uh, uh, a sensitivity to power dynamics will make us um, better, you know, learners of disability studies and beyond. Right. So uh, I, I uh, so that's one um, um, uh, framework. Let me do one more uh, uh, when it comes to power. Okay. Let me think about subjectivity now. How? Foucault's notion of subjectivity is very helpful in DS thinking. Right, see, uh, subjectivity, um, what are the things that contribute to subjectivity? Well, uh, um, as, I, as I told you uh, in, in the early lecture, subjectivity is that which, uh, you know, is not something locked inside the skin. It's not a force. It's not an entity. That is something that is actively made up of. Uh, it is actively in the making. It is a productive force. It is self, it's myself being part of the context that is constantly in the making, you see. So in, in that sense, I have to be uh, um, uh, uh, Foucauldian notion of subjectivity can help us to see, uh, uh, um, help DS and DS uh, disability studies in turn help uh, uh, Foucauldian notion of subjectivity to fine tune itself. Let's see how. Um, well, um, I, I borrow from Shelley uh, one of the essays on nominalism. Uh, in Shelley Tremaine's book. Okay, um, Foucault uh, is talking about perversion, okay, it, 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 the notion of implantation of perversion. Uh, what is it, what is it he talking about? Um, a, I told you in the beginning he, he was uh, homosexual, okay, um, right. Uh, so, he was interested in history of uh, sexuality. Um, he, he, he was mad, uh, within quotes. So, uh, when it came to history of madness, uh, he said regimentation led to more violence against people uh, with mental impairment or, or, or madness. Uh, in the pre-modern period, in Foucault's analysis, people, mad people were considered 
ecstatic, maybe they were, they are in touch with the divine, they, they can, you know, uh, 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 maybe they are possessed by demon and so on. So this was considered normal to, to, to talk to, uh, to be in touch with the divine or to be in touch with the devil and so on. Uh, it, it was considered a way of life. Uh, but uh, from, from Renaissance onwards, uh, people uh, uh, with uh, deviant behavior uh, were considered uh, out of reason. So the, the binary started coming, uh, reason and unreason. What do we do with people who are un, into unreason or unreasonable? They, uh, uh, well, you don't, uh, for example, uh, in a classroom to, you know, uh, for somebody to uh, not be quiet and say something which was not expected. So uh, you simply remove them from the classroom. Uh, you simply out of mind, out of, out of sight, out of mind, that kind of phenomenon. Uh, so, uh, um, um, you know, uh, in a, from 19th century onwards, with the advancement of medicine, with some development in place about brain sciences, madness or deviant behavior or behavior of unreason was considered to be some problem, uh, some problem created by maladaptive or repaired brain. Our entire madness was located in brain that was that's gone array, array, uh, disarray. Okay, so uh, now uh, he goes on to this do this kind of effects that knowledge produces on people. Uh, in their respective lives and uh, even his, in his book on history of sexuality uh, he, he, his, he could see how homosexuality was created to normalize heterosexuality and so on. So some kind of perversion was implanted uh, in the creation of knowledge at every point in time uh, in modern history to see how uh, uh, to create the normal, the, the name of the normal. So this is called nominalism, uh, to assign a name uh, to the normal through implanting perversions elsewhere on the homosexual, on the mad and so on. You see? Uh, now think about disability. Somebody may say, well, you cannot hear, therefore, classroom is not for you. You can't see, therefore, color is not for you. You are mad, you are imbalanced in emotion, and therefore, computer science is not for you. You look short, and therefore, you know, uh, uh, modeling is not for you. You look, uh, there is a scar in your face and therefore you cannot be in a reception desk. They implant uh, this uh, uh, impairments which look neutral, say hearing impairment, blindness, short stature, they can use all the politically correct terms but implant it on you so that they can neutrally in scientific language make you withdraw implantation of impairment. Some kind of naming, indexing, uh, giving name you are hearing impaired and therefore you don't belong here. You see, uh, that kind of 
nomenclatures which look neutral, uh, uh, say mental illness, schizophrenia and so on, they looked neutral because they came with jargon, they came with uh, uh, some clinical research findings, statistics and so on. But you, you, uh, so the nomenclatures look normal uh, and neutral and therefore we need to obey uh, discipline, uh, obey and you know, uh, we, we need to obey and, and you know, withdraw so as to be punished from being, uh, you know, being able to uh, go into roles, assume roles that you wanted to do. So, uh, a, what is the argument here? Subjectivity, disabled subjectivity, uh, you know, is uh, one has to, uh, uh, to, 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 fun, to, to be in this world, to be oneself, uh, to be comfortable in one's own flesh and uh, one's own body, mind and soul and so on. One needs to be vigilant about what is neutrally said to oneself. So disabled activists and even common people, they know too well that what kind of attribute uh, makes them withdraw, what kind of attribute makes them advance and what kind of attribute, you know, uh, is for their flourishing. So, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 an awareness of subjectivity that is beyond oneself is something disability stands to benefit and disability can studies uh, can also give new insights about subjectivity formation outside oneself uh, using this kind of framework and one of them is nominalism which I have borrowed from Shelley Tremaine's book. Well, uh, in what other way um, um, uh, DS, Primo, uh, DS has an interesting connect with governmentality? Well, uh, one can talk about care, uh, disability care. Well, mm, governmentality is all about self-governing at all and one of the ways in which interdependence comes when one of the ways in which people relate to each other is care. For example, parents care for children, friends care for each other, teacher care for their students and students care for their alma mater and, and, and uh, uh, doctors care for patients and, uh, uh, and the thing keeps going on. Okay. Uh, so, and therefore, some kind of intersubjectivity, some kind of interdependence happens when, um, uh, happens in care. But Foucauldian analysis applied only for subject formation. Well, uh, it's all about self-governing, but it is also about circulation of the idea of self-governing. Okay. So, that is where Foucauldian governmentality is useful when we think about care. How? Let me give an example. Suppose somebody um, is, um, um, one has a disabled friend, say hearing impaired, okay, and that person needs some support maybe to take classroom notes. Uh, one of the thing is to, um, you know, give some technology support. Even if it is there, uh, maybe um, some more support is required. But uh, it is entirely possible that uh, because of uh, affect, that is emotion, uh, different kinds of emotion that we carry about each other, that deaf person suffers negative projection on the part of their classmates entirely. For example, uh, 
in everyday situation we all all handle whether disabled or not negative projections on each other for um, say a school student uh, say or my young student uh, uh, just by looking at me somebody may feel uh, a student of mine may feel you know oh this person looks like very good person or on the other hand some other person may uh, feel oh my god this man should be a devil maybe uh, uh, he or she was thinking about maybe a neighbor uncle who you know uh, was terrible with that person so we have different projections and projective identifications with people usually people with disability um, expect two opposite side of emotions one is oh oh my god i should hold him so tight uh, uh, because uh, he cannot walk maybe he will fall yeah so uh, he is absolutely dependent on me the other extreme there is an ex other extreme and the other extreme is oh my god she is genius um, and uh, maybe above normal i should bow and you know admire my homage uh, respect and salute for that person this opposite uh, seemingly opposite projections both are false emotions but those emotions can drive a caring relationship okay and uh, and that uh, and that caring relationship need not collapse because of this opposite emotion it can just keep going on okay so uh, uh, on the one hand there is this uh, uh, effect and emotions which are multiple uh, love uh, desire projections negative and positive anger you know all kinds of in, in indian tradition has uh, nine rasas or sentiments okay krodha shringara you know uh, veera and so on uh, we'll come to that later uh, in another lecture uh, so now uh, so these emotions can uh, influence a caring relationship normative consideration well uh, we are governed by norms um, a man should do this uh, a woman should do this uh, these rules okay uh, uh, there, there are also uh, um, uh, one should not be cared like this maybe um, uh, uh, an elderly person um, uh, doesn't have to uh, be uh, you know given a helping hand to watch cricket all he needs is maybe some devotional uh, songs just play for him he will be all right okay uh, there are different normative considerations that you know drive our uh, desires our ambitions our uh, you know moral ideas about who should live who should not live who should get lion share of the cake lion share of the cake and lots of things that can again uh, determine interdependence and intersubjectivity that uh, form because of the caring relationship and there are different normative considerations uh, in different care formations for example mother child mother and disabled child relationship mother may consider it is her duty to give herself wholly for the child you know without even any form of uh, self compassion she she might you know uh, burn herself 
uh, like a candle and and then give for the give herself for the sake of the child which is actually not correct so that can happen such normative considerations can influence uh, caring relationships and subjectivities that form there and role expectations uh, well in in caregiving uh, caregiving uh, care and disability it it's it's very interesting uh, because role reversals can happen in uh, disability care diets for example a man um, who is expected otherwise to be uh, by way of social norms to be expected in the driving seat may you know take a back seat and uh, uh, or wait a minute this is may not always be straightforward as it sounds uh, because you know role reversals can create tensions uh, both positive and negative among a care diet so what am i saying well uh, this is not when uh, seeing power equations at micro level okay uh, uh, there may be many many considerations going on including competing emotions affective normative considerations role expectations and so on in a caring relationship and uh, because it is emotion because it is normative consideration one need not exclude them beyond power and remember in foucault in terms power is not negative it, it is a kind of circulation uh, of role playing interplay and uh, relationships that people make uh, possible okay well um and finally let's talk about um um in in terms of disability theory it's also about ethics of inclusion as i said early uh, disability studies is not about just knowledge creation uh, it is a critique of knowledge itself okay uh, because see remember foucauldian composite term disability slash sorry power slash knowledge because uh, it, it is not saying power is equal to knowledge and knowledge is equal to power nonsense that that's not the case it's about how uh, power uh, in its circulation at macro level that is if you say if you go to an english medium school um, then it has some kind of in influence about how you make your public persona via english as opposed to how if you go to uh, say tamil or telugu medium and how you make your persona available in public space via those languages um at the micro level uh, human dynamics Uh, uh like the ones i uh, discussed about how they influence similarly a uh, uh, when when apply to uh, you know uh, in a disability studies point of view knowledge um, um cannot be you know d- uh can cannot be seen on its own terms it has to be seen in access terms it has to be seen in how uh, intersubjectively it is available it has to be seen through structures why are uh, which they are available it has to be seen through standpoint let me explain access um literacy is as important as literary for example uh, a way a knowledge is available in braille the way knowledge is 
available in print the way knowledge is available in different other sources they you know affect the way uh, affect uh, how that knowledge is circulated okay for example knowledge available through touch means and um, uh, maybe audio recording etc they take time they are not available in plenty uh, they even wall scribe reader audio books and special means by which they are accessed these influence how knowledge is available to certain people you cannot say well i will not give going to give you um, a braille machine uh, a braille copy but i would expect you to perform in the same way as others so uh, uh, when it, when it comes to inclusion ethics uh, foucauldian and uh, governmentality is immensely useful uh, to know how a knowledge is made how it influences uh, the power that uh, a disabled and non disabled uh, fit in how they make it to certain fields of knowledge how they move around and so on right concluding remarks uh, for the, in, the, in these two lectures um i managed to say something uh, introduce foucault foucault's idea of governmentality and then uh the way it can uh, uh absorb something from disability studies and give something in return but the larger picture is this governmentality power uh, governmentality sorry governmentality works through circulation of power and power is made up of how much and in what terms knowledge makes itself and circulates among people disability studies as a um uh, uh as a knowledge on embodiment as a knowledge on standpoint with bodies different bodies it helps us to understand how corporeality uh, how body uh, and minds uh you know circulate governmentality differently okay so by way of disciplinary power or bio power uh we have now when we combine both we can be extra cautious about disciplinary power such as how uh we 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 you know inherent notions and ideas about how we present ourselves and how we uh learn certain things and bio power macro knowledges like statistical knowledge about one's health uh insurance life courses and chances uh one can be you know uh self reflexive about it and not be obsessively attached to one particular ideology that's the lesson i would say is a supreme lesson available when we think about governmentality and disability studies together Thank you so much.